Welcome to the coming apocalypse. Evangelist and pastor Paul Bagley will take you on a journey into the end times prophecy. He'll examine current world events and explain how they relate to the end times. For decades, Pastor Bagley has provided people all over the world with an understanding of today's world events from a biblical perspective. Now, here's your host, Pastor Paul Bagley. Welcome to the coming apocalypse. I'm Pastor Paul Begley, and today we've got a dynamite broadcast for you. You know what? Everybody wonders about the Middle East. They worry about what's going on in the different nations of the world, and how does it pertain to these last days? Well, today in this broadcast, we're going to take a look at several different nations, their positioning, the EU. We're going to look at Jerusalem. We're going to take a look at some of the other nations surrounding there. What about the peace deal in the Middle East? Where's that at? And what's going on with everybody? America's role. What's taking place? How close are we to the coming of the Lord? With all of the tension building and all of the Twitter feeds flying back and forth, do we really know where we stand in these last days? Well, don't go nowhere. When we come back, we're going to explore the armies are gathering in the East. Be right back. A powerful conference taking place in California, Irvine, California, October 10th through the 13th. Disclosure on the West Coast. I'll be speaking at this conference, revealing there the oracles of Isaiah, also known as Isaiah's Apocalypse. You don't want to miss this. And I've been led of the Lord to tell you I want to baptize as many as will come. Use the promo code BEGLY20. I'll see you there. All right, folks, all right, the armies are gathering in the east. Now, when you think about that, you say, wow, are you serious? What do you, what do you mean by that? Well, look at this. There's never been more money spent in the history of the world on defense than it is right now. It's not just the armies. It's not just the Air Force. It's not just the Navy. But we're talking about space as well. See, now what's happened is warfare has, you have, to be, you have to be able to compete on all four levels. And with resources, with the population growing and resources declining and tensions rising and religious fervor, religious fanatical fervor, the apocalyptic understanding of so many religions, it's becoming quite evident that the words of Jesus Christ are coming to pass exactly as he said they would. Now, one of the very, uh, when you talk about signs of his coming, we talked about that a few weeks ago. If you think back to this, here's what Jesus said in Luke 21. He said in verse 20, And when you shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. All right? When you see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. Now, this is an important scripture because think back. Jerusalem has been attacked 29 times in history and has changed hands 19 times. So Jesus says this 2,000 years ago, but prior to this, Jerusalem had already come under many attacks. The Babylonians destroyed uh, the first temple, Solomon's temple, in 586 B.C., took a bunch of the Jews, carried them into Babylon for 70 years, they held captives, stole the golden vessels right out of the house of God and drank his wine to his idol gods. And then there was King Cyrus, the Persian Empire, who let the Jews go back home and sent money and gold and silver and said, go build your temple. What? And then when they get back, they rebuild it over a period of time only to fall to the hands of more uh, invasions, including the Roman Empire that ends up destroying the temple again in 70 A.D., which is exactly what Jesus said would happen. So 70 A.D., the, uh, you know, you have the destruction of the second temple. And then you study in the Bible, the early church gets started. It's, it's, it's moving around. Everything's happening. And now there's all these years, and Jerusalem is still a wasteland. People come, they go, the Ottoman Empire, the British Empire, the Roman Empire. I mean, everybody has, takes a crack at it. And even, even Mark Twain showed up in the 1800s, and when he got there, said, this is nothing but a wasteland, rubble. What a worthless piece of ground. 
the Holy Land? This is something special. It was a desert, and Jerusalem was in shambles. Uh, just a few squatters running around in it, but there was no rhyme or reason. I mean, Mark Twain told us this historically. And I've even got a book at home that's about this thick. It's 145 years old. It's the history of the church. And it actually starts before that. It just goes all the way from uh, Abraham all the way to the, uh, to, to the era of the church age. It was written in 1874, uh, and uh, but it was written about the history of the church up until 1870, and then was published in 1874, and I have the original copy of it. I have it in my library. Well, I was reading it, and come to the realization, it talks about all of the evolution of the church and the, and the Catholicism and the Reformation and all the different uh, denominations, the Anabaptists and the Huguenots and everybody, okay? The have-nots, the hogganots, and all the other knots, okay? And uh, at the end of the day, uh, in 1870, the church world decided that God was not going to rebirth Israel as a nation. So for the first 1870 years after, the, uh, you know, of this century, the church was preaching Christ is coming, but first, the nation of Israel must be rebirthed as a nation. And so it's the year 1870, and there's no Israel. And the church decided, you know what? Maybe we missed it. Maybe Ezekiel 37 didn't mean this. And they stopped preaching the rebirth of Israel as a nation. Had they just held on a little bit longer in 1948 after World War II, I mean, Satan really, he had the church convinced now they were no longer preaching the rebirth of Israel. And then he rose up Adolf Hitler, the Antichrist of his day, who tried to annihilate the Jews with the extermination of the Holocaust of 6 million, and he killed 7 million Christians, by the way. And look like this is the end. There's no Israel ever, only to find out that the 600,000 refugees end up being sent to the Holy Land. And then by... 1948, Israel becomes a nation, unanimously voted by the United Nations, 197 to 0. Israel becomes a nation. The rebirth of Israel, a prophecy fulfilled. And through these, during that time, you have the Six-Day War, 1967. Jerusalem is unified as the holy city. And then we have, of course, the, the, the Yom Kippur War of 1973. And Israel ends up in 67, taking back the Golan Heights. Now, President Trump declares that Jerusalem's the holy city undivided and moves the U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem on the 70th anniversary and declares just recently that the Golan Heights is the sovereign property of Israel. I mean, are you serious? Bible prophecy. Now you see the army starting to move around. Everybody's shifting. Everybody's building up. Everybody's afraid. The Chinese, the Russians, the Americans. What's going on in Venezuela? What's taking place in North Korea? What about the nukes here, nukes there, here a nuke, there a nuke? Everywhere I look, I see a nuke. We see the weapons of warfare and the anger and the hatred in the United Nations, and they're at each other's throat, and there's turmoil, and there's political chaos, and there's the Brexit or the exit, or they never did Brexit. And all of this goes on, and then you see the army starting to gather. Iran, Syria, Russia different radical factions, all in Syria, staring at, across the border with Israel, Hezbollah, southern Lebanon, Hamas, Gaza Strip, the Egyptians. We had the Arab Spring, all of this creating this chaos. And so here's what the Bible says. Then let them which are in Judea, verse 21, flee to the mountains and let them which are in the midst of it depart out and let not them that are in the countries enter therein too. For these be the days of vengeance that all things which are written may be fulfilled. But woe unto them that are with child, and them that give suck in those days, for there shall be great distress in the land and wrath upon this people, the Jewish people coming under one last attack, one last uh, vengeance. Uh, things that are happening, and they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive into all nations, and Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. And then the script, and you can read that in the book of Zechariah 14. The Bible tells you in Zechariah 12 that Jerusalem will become this cup of trembling, this burdensome stone in all people. 
The, Jerusalem will get attacked. There will be some refugees. There will be some issues. And then Jesus says this. Oh, by the way, while that's happening, while the armies are gathering in the east, there's going to be signs in the heavens, all right? And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth, the stress of nations with perplexity, the sea, the waves will be roaring, men's hearts are failing them for fear, for looking after those things that are coming upon the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the cloud with power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, he said, then look up, lift up your heads. Your redemption is drawing nigh. Oh, praise God. Folks, this is nothing to fear. Remember what Jesus said? Wars, rumors of wars. Nations shall rise against nations. See that you be not be troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. So here we see this compassing of the armies. And now you see the Russians teaming up with the Iranians and with the Turks. And they're building a coalition. Some would call it Team Gog and Magog. And you begin to understand that the, the China and the trade wars, and you see the situation building um, geopolitically and the struggle over who controls the oil, who controls the gold, who controls the diamonds. And next is who controls space. We're climbing into the heavens. We're going to build a base on the moon, another one on Mars. They have these secret weapons now called the rod of God, satellites with laser beams that can zap and blow away and ex exterminate. Then they have EMPs, electronic, um, electromagnetic pulse. That These are nukes that explode in the sky and will kill all of the uh, electro electronic components on the earth, EMP attacks, of which most nations have no way to shield or protect themselves. So now it's not just the armies that are on the ground or the ships that are in the sea or the planes in the air, but it's the space rockets and technologies advancing. And then we see there's the, the constant threat of uh, algorithms in the solar, so in the social media. And there you'll see the black horseman of the apocalypse is more than just a microchip in your hand. But there's algorithms, social credit scores, um, the ability to decide who is in and who is out and based on a series of components and technological uh, in injecting into the system. In other words, your faith in Christ may shut you out of many companies who will do, you already see companies now who, who just up and boycott people for no reason. They don't like the way this person believes. Boycott them. Israel's been dealing with the BDS forever, boycotting Israel because they produce products that's made in the Holy Land that they believe should not be in the land of Israel, but should be the land of someone else, Palestine or someone else. So they're already under this scrutiny. But you're seeing it now in the mainstream here in America. Companies are choosing political sides instead of doing just, just do business for everyone. Since when do you just not do business for, with people? You don't, like, so you don't like people, so you just say you're not going to sell them or you're not going to buy their products. You're going to try to boycott them and shut them out. These tactics are the tactics of the beast kingdom that's coming. See, the armies are gathering in the east, but the spirit of the Antichrist is global. And it's Satan's last ditch effort to try to stop the coming of Jesus Christ. But folks, you cannot stop him. I can't stop it. He is coming and he's coming soon. Look up. Your redemption is drawing nigh. I'll be right back in just a moment. A brand new DVD set on the signs of his coming. We took a very extensive look at the prophecies in the book of Matthew chapter 24 and how they play out across the Bible. The signs of his coming takes a strong look at the comparison of the days of Noah to the coming of Jesus Christ. Are you ready for the signs and do you understand he's coming soon? Get it at my website right now. Welcome back, folks. I started thinking about some things like for right, when you think about the fact that Israel's been operating without a Knesset, there's a prime minister who won an election with more votes than he had before the election, but yet the Knesset government in Israel refused to form a government with a government with him. So when Benjamin Netanyahu was reelected, the government refused to form one with him. 
Matter of fact, the Knesset voted themselves all and dissolved themselves and said they're going to take the rest 100 days off. Everyone thought then that Netanyahu was going to resign and go see the president, Pere, I mean, President uh, uh, Rivlin, and go ahead and resign and let Rivlin call the Knesset back and choose someone new. But instead, King Bibi, they call him, decided, you know what, I'll just run the country without a Knesset. And then we'll vote again if these guys want to come back. If not, I'll just keep running the country. Whoever saw this, it's almost like he become the king of Israel. Oh, that's right, they've had quite a few kings. So are we, what has been, will be, and what will be has been? Is this part of the, will the deal get signed, the covenant with many, while the Knesset is not there? I often wonder about that. Well, is this the fig tree shooting forth? Look what it says in Luke 21, 29. And he spake unto them a parable. He said, behold, the fig tree and all the trees. When they now shoot forth, you see and know of your own selves that summer is now nigh at hand. So likewise ye, when you see these things come to pass, know that the kingdom of God is nigh at hand. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass away till all be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. So, okay, okay, okay. So again, we see this Comparison of Israel to the fig tree, or sometimes known as the fig tree generation. It's been 70 years, 71 years now Israel's been a nation. And so as we go forward, I think that um, we start to wonder, how close are we to seeing the great battles prophesied in the Bible? You have the Psalms 83, where there's going to be this conspiracy of, of nations that come against Israel. But then, then you got Ezekiel 38, where the Bible starts talking about literally the battle of Gog and Magog in a time like we never thought we would see before. Taking us up to this very present hour that we're in a situation where if folks need to realize that we're so close to the coming of Jesus Christ. And I think that when I look at over a past, over the last period of the last few years or even over my lifetime, I've seen things progressing at such a, a pace and at such a level that we never thought we'd ever see or comprehend would actually be happening. But the Bible tells us in verse 33, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. No wonder they keep finding the Dead Sea Scrolls and the Copper Scrolls and the, and the uh, you know, uh, all the different ancient uh, manuscripts they keep finding ancient civilizations and artifacts that prove that the biblical narrative is true, that the Bible is true, and that and the historical accounts have come to pass are true. And that God's word, when they found the whole book of Isaiah completely intact at the Dead Sea Scrolls, word for word, exactly had been carried out, still the same. What an amazing thing, written in Hebrew. And then notice this, he said, take heed to yourselves. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Take heed to yourselves, lest any time your hearts be overcharged and surfreting and drunkenness and cares of this life, so that the day come upon you unaware. For as a snare shall it come up on all of them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of God. I love that verse. I mean, are you serious? I love the verse. The world's crumbling, the world's fumbling and stumbling and mumbling, and everybody's running around groaning and moaning and doom and gloom, but Christ is coming, and he's coming after those that are ready. He's coming after a glorious church, one without spot or blemish or wrinkle or any such thing. The armies are gathering in the east. Unfortunately, we're on the brink of a horrific situation. I pray daily it doesn't happen, but you can see the buildup. You can see the military buildup right now. You can feel the tension between Iran, the United States, Israel, Saudi Arabia, 
And unfortunately, what the Iranians uh, continue to look at wanting to do is not just attack Israel, but they want to attack Islam itself. They really want to blow up the Black Stone in Mecca and, re and hijack Islam from the Sunni is, uh, Sunnis and give it to the Shiites. Now, it's not all the Iranian people, because you got a lot of wonderful Iranian people. They're caught in this mess. Many are Christian in Iran. It's a, it's a regime that's apocalyptic in nature. And they're causing, because of their desire to wipe out Israel, it's caused armies to gather around Jerusalem. Armies, some who are against Israel and some that are for them. But everybody's concerned about what may take place here. It is absolutely the hour of temptation that's coming upon the earth. It's a time like we've never seen before. The Bible talks about World War III, actually, in the book of Revelation. We know about the battle of Gog and Magog, and we also know that the Bible talks about the last battle of all battles, the battle of Armageddon, which is fought also in Israel, in the valley of Megiddo. So the armies are gathering. Even the vultures are gathering. The fact that Israel has more birds in that little spot of land than all the rest of the countries of the world. Germany's second. There's over 670 some species of birds that are in Israel and over 400 some species in Germany and the rest of the world don't even come close to that. And there's more vultures in Israel every year than in any other nation in the world. Well, why in the world would vultures, why in the world would the eagles be gathered there? Because if you read about the great battle of Gog and Magog, you know that when these armies come against Israel and they are slaughtered by God, that God commands that the fowls of the air to come and eat the flesh of those that fought, that it would take seven months to bury the dead and seven years to get rid of the weapons that are scattered around the land, probably radiation, who knows what all it is. So, yeah, the armies are gathering. And I can't change it, you can't change it. But we can change our own hearts. And we can be prepared for such a time as this. So, you know, when we talk about in the last few weeks, we talk about the, you know, the signs of his coming. We talk about don't be left behind. We talk about the joy of heaven and, the, and, the, and what it means to, have, uh, to enter into that holy city. The armies are gathering, but so what? Christ is coming. And so what we must do is continue to keep ourselves prepared and ready and looking for the coming of the Lord. Fill with his, um, the power of his might. Fill with his joy. Fill with his love. Fill with the burning desire to see our family saved and our friends saved and the folks we come in contact with. We are looking for a city whose builder and maker is God. Where I'm going to a land where there'll be no more conflict, no more commotion, no more uh, fighting and infighting. No more uh, mistrust and hatred. No more uh, vengeance. No more wrath. No more desire to eliminate and, and the wickedness and the evil, the malice. It'd be gone when we get to that city. And so I tell you, it's where we all should want to go. I finished this chapter by hearing the scripture say, watch therefore, verse 36, watch therefore and pray always that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. There could be nothing greater than being prepared to meet the Lord. You say, Pastor, the weapons are getting very dangerous. Will there be Star Wars in the heavens and space? And will there be all kinds of fighting? Probably. Uh, they don't build these things not to ever use them. It is a, it is a dangerous time. And uh, if people, that's why the Bible says men's hearts are going to fail them for fear, for looking after those things coming upon the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Okay? So they understand there's something coming. And men will regret, the Bible tells us, they will pray to die and death will flee from them. The armies are gathering in the east. The Christ is coming soon. We'll be right back in just a moment. A powerful conference taking place in California, Irvine, California, October 10th through the 13th. Disclosure on the West Coast. 
I'll be speaking at this conference, revealing there the oracles of Isaiah, also known as Isaiah's Apocalypse. You don't want to miss this. And I've been led of the Lord to tell you I want to baptize as many as will come. Use the promo code BEGLY20. I'll see you there. All right, folks, all right. I'm telling you right now, I'm looking for the coming of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I want to share something with you. You know, there's nothing greater than being a born-again Christian, a believer in the Lord. And when you find the joy of salvation, you find a peace that passes all understanding. It's a peace that's, you know, the Bible says it's joy unspeakable and full of glory. And the half has never yet been told. Studying Bible prophecy always leads me to the understanding of one true fact, that Christ loves all of us. My, the Bible tells us, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. And if you hear the voice of the Lord, if you feel the Spirit of God, if God speaks to your heart, begins to knock at your door and say, look, I love you. And the life I can give you, the hope that he can give you is beyond anything you've ever imagined. Peace, peace that comes within the soul. Why don't we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to be saved. I want to be born again. I want to be washed in the blood of the Lamb. I realize, God, that some of these things are beyond my control. I cannot change them, but I can make a change in my own life, that I can find the peace of Christ Jesus. And I, I want to repent of my sins and confess my sins to you and call upon the name of the Lord. I believe, Lord, you, Jesus, I believe you're the Son of God. I believe you're the King of kings, the Lord of lords. And I want to make things right. I want to repent. I want to get right with God. I want to be saved born again and filled with your love. So come into my heart, wash away all that sin in your precious blood. Save me and set me free. And I praise you, Lord, and I thank you in Jesus' name. And the people should be shouting all over the land out there. You know what, folks? Welcome to the family of God. And I tell you what, I want to encourage all of you, tell others about this powerful broadcast that airs here every week, right here at the same time, same channel. I believe that if you we can do that, we get people watching, it's going to wake up. Some of them are very interested in what goes on in the last days. And we have, without a doubt, the greatest, greatest story. Jesus is the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Come to my website at paulbeckleyprophecy.com. 